Read my lips. Remember, you will be better off four years from now than you are today. Well, it's four years later. How you doing? For so long, government has failed us, and one of its worst failures has been welfare. I have a plan to end welfare as we know it, to break the cycle of welfare dependency. We'll provide education, job training, and child care, but then those who are able must go to work, either in the private sector or in public service. I know it can work. In my state, we've moved 17,000 people from welfare rolls to payrolls. It's time to make welfare what it should be, a second chance, not a way of life. Nineteen eighty eight. Thirty million jobs in the next eight years. Nineteen ninety, America's jobless rate hits a three year high. I'm not prepared to say we're in recession. March nineteen ninety two, jobless rate hits six year high. The economy is strengthening. George Bush vetoes unemployment compensation. The economy continues to grow. July nineteen ninety two, unemployment is the highest in eight years. If George Bush doesn't understand the problem, how can he solve it? We can't afford four more years. Government just isn't working for the hardworking families of America. We need fundamental change, not more of the same. We need more than vague promises, too. That's why I've offered a plan, a real plan, to get our economy moving again, invest in our people with education and job training, rebuild America, and create 8 million new jobs. A plan to take on the big insurance companies and drug companies to control health costs and ensure quality, affordable health care for every American. No more tax breaks to corporations for moving our jobs overseas, but real incentives to invest here at home and create jobs for our people. We're going to ask the rich to pay their fair share. If you make more than $200,000, you'll pay a little more so the rest of America can finally get a break. It's a plan that puts government back on your side for a change. Take a look at the plan. Let me know what you think. We won't fix all our problems overnight, but together we can make America work again. Government just isn't working for the hardworking families of America. We need fundamental change, not more of the same. We need more than vague promises, too. That's why I've offered a plan, a real plan, to get our economy moving again, invest in our people with education and job training, rebuild America, and create 8 million new jobs. A plan to take on the big insurance companies and drug companies to control health costs and ensure quality, affordable health care for every American. No more tax breaks to corporations for moving our jobs overseas, but real incentives to invest here at home and create jobs for our people. We're going to ask the rich to pay their fair share. If you make more than $200,000, you'll pay a little more so the rest of America can finally get a break. It's a plan that puts government back on your side for a change. Take a look at the plan. Let me know what you think. We won't fix all our problems overnight, but together we can make America work again. Government just isn't working for the hardworking families of America. We need fundamental change, not more of the same. That's why I've offered a comprehensive plan, a real plan to rebuild America, create 8 million new jobs, invest in education and job training, ensure quality, affordable health care for all. We're going to ask the rich to pay their fair share so the rest of America can finally get a break, a plan to put government back on your side. Read it yourself. Together, we can make America work again. Government just isn't working for the hardworking families of America. We need fundamental change, not more of the same. That's why I've offered a comprehensive plan, a real plan to rebuild America, create 8 million new jobs, invest in education and job training, ensure quality, affordable health care for all. We're going to ask the rich to pay their fair share so the rest of America can finally get a break, a plan to put government back on your side. Read it yourself. Together, we can make America work again.
We've been under trickle-down economics for 12 years. Just keep taxes low on the wealthy and see what happens. Well, I'll tell you what's happened. Most Americans are working harder for less money. Unemployment's up. Health care costs are exploding. We are not doing what it takes to compete and win. I've worked hard on a different plan. Let's give incentives to invest in new jobs. Let's spend more on education and training. Let's provide basic health care to all Americans. Putting our people first, rebuilding this economy, making us competitive. If we do those things, we'll compete and win, and we'll bring this country back. Nineteen eighty eight. Read my lips. No new taxes. Then George Bush signed the second biggest tax increase in American history. Read my lips. George Bush increased taxes on the middle class. Bush doubled the beer tax and increased the gas tax by fifty six percent. Now George Bush wants to give a hundred and eight thousand dollar tax break to millionaires. A hundred and eight thousand dollars. Guess who's going to pay? We can't afford four more years. For 12 years, he's battled the odds in one of America's poorest states and made steady progress. Arkansas is now first in the nation in job growth. Even Bush's own Secretary of Labor just called job growth in Arkansas enormous. He moved 17,000 people from welfare to work, and he's kept taxes low. Arkansas has the second lowest tax burden in the country. No wonder his fellow governors, Democrats and Republicans, have named him the nation's most effective governor. Bill Clinton for People for a Change. George Bush is running attack ads. He says all these people would have their taxes raised by Bill Clinton. Scary, huh? Misleading, says the Washington Post. And the Wall Street Journal says Clinton has proposed to cut taxes for the sort of people featured in Bush's ad. So why is Bush doing it? Because George Bush has had the worst economic record of any president in 50 years. George Bush is trying to scare you about Bill Clinton. But nothing could be more frightening than four more years. They're a new generation of Democrats, Bill Clinton and Al Gore, and they don't think the way the old Democratic Party did. They've called for an end to welfare as we know it, so welfare can be a second chance, not a way of life. They've sent a strong signal to criminals by supporting the death penalty, and they've rejected the old tax and spend politics. Clinton's balanced 12 budgets, and they've proposed a new plan investing in people, detailing $140 billion in spending cuts they'd make right now. Clinton Gore, for people, for a change. Nineteen eighty eight. We will be able to produce thirty million jobs in the next eight years. Under George Bush, more private sector jobs have been lost than have been created. And I am an environmentalist. The Sierra Club says Bush allowed his administration to quote gut clean air rules. I want to be the education president. George Bush tried to cut college aid for families making over twenty thousand a year. I want a kinder and gentler. Uh uh. We can't afford four more years. All across America, people are hurting. And what is George Bush doing? The press calls his campaign gutter politics, irresponsible, malicious and dangerous mudslinging, wrong, deceitful. It's sad to see a president stoop this low, nasty and shrill, more mean-spirited than presidential, deplorably sordid, lies and attempted distraction. Bush is smeared new low, cheap shot, Mr. President. Stop sleazy tactics and talk straight. We can't afford four more years. What we need to do is have a president who has the guts to take on the waste. The Clinton health care plan cut $746 billion in waste. Take on the insurance companies, the drug companies, the bureaucracies, the phenomenal waste the government causes. It will save the average family over $1,300 a year. And take that money we save and put it into providing basic, affordable health care for all Americans. An independent panel of experts says Clinton's plan saves more. Other countries have done it, and I'm tired of being told America can't. Read my lips. Remember, 
you will be better off four years from now than you are today. Well, it's four years later. How you doing? This is the $825 billion question. That's how much foreign corporations operating in the U.S. took in one year. But 72% of them didn't pay one dime in taxes, not one dime. And George Bush supports tax loopholes for foreign companies operating here, supports them so much that he attacks Bill Clinton for wanting to close them. Bill Clinton wants to collect what foreign corporations owe and put the money to work to rebuild America. Clinton Gore, for people, for a change. Bill Clinton's economic plan, endorsed by over 600 economists, including 10 Nobel Prize winners as the best hope for reviving the nation's economy. More than 400 of America's most respected business leaders say the Clinton plan will create jobs. A panel of independent experts convened by Time magazine concludes that Clinton's plan has the best solutions to our economic problems. And now even the author of Ross Perot's plan has endorsed Bill Clinton for president. Let's get our economy moving again. George Bush says you can trust him in a crisis, but we're in a crisis, an economic crisis, and we haven't been able to trust George Bush. It is not recession. It is not, does not fit the definition of recession. George Bush has ignored the facts, blamed others, failed to take action. Far better than doing something bad to this economy is doing nothing at all. If George Bush can't be trusted to use the powers of the presidency to get our economy moving, it's time for a president who will. Bill Clinton, for people, for a change. George Bush, the observer says new information about Mr. Bush's role in the Iran arms for hostages deal and the breaking of his read my lips no tax pledge raised doubts about his trustworthiness. The current says he has been shifty on key issues. The Oregonian, we refocused on Bush's flip flops, on abortion and taxes, his secret arming of the brutal Iraqi regime. Frankly, we no longer trust him. The Philadelphia Daily News, Bush is without a principle or a clue. It does come down to who you trust. That's why it comes down to Bill Clinton for president. George Bush said he'd do what he had to do to be reelected, and that's one promise he's kept. CBS, CNN, and newspapers across the country call his ads misleading and wrong. The fact is, under Bill Clinton's leadership, Arkansas leads the nation in job growth, has the second lowest tax burden and the lowest government spending in the country, and he's balanced 12 budgets. They reduced infant mortality and now have the highest graduation rate in the region. In the past year, Arkansas's crime rate went down. Clinton Gore for the change we need. CBS, CNN, and newspapers across the country call George Bush's ads misleading and wrong. The fact is, under Bill Clinton's leadership, Arkansas leads the nation in job growth, has the second lowest tax burden and the lowest government spending in the country, and he's balanced 12 budgets. They reduced infant mortality and now have the highest graduation rate in the region, and in the past year, Arkansas's crime rate went down. No wonder the Washington Post says George Bush is lying about Bill Clinton's record and why the Oregonian concluded, frankly, we no longer trust George Bush. I want you to believe that we can make America work again. He knows we can do it. He knows we must, because we can't afford four more years of the same. And that's what it's all about. It's time to unite this country for change. No easy or simple solutions, but a real plan to jumpstart our economy. Put people first with education, job training, health care we can afford. Together, we can get this country moving again. It won't be easy, but let's get to work. Clinton Gore, for people, for a change. Jumpstart the economy. Rebuild roads, bridges, highways, jobs right now. That's the Clinton-Gore plan. Get us back on our feet. 
Change, prepare for tomorrow. Invest in job training, research, new technologies. They're putting people first. Change, create new industries. High-speed rail, environmental technologies, information networks, creating high-wage jobs, sweeping education reform, higher standards, the tools to compete. Clinton Gore, a new plan to change America. Jumpstart the economy. Rebuild roads, bridges, highways, jobs right now. That's the Clinton Gore plan. Get us back on our feet. Change, prepare for tomorrow. Invest in job training, research, new technologies. They're putting people first. Change, create new industries, high-speed rail, environmental technologies, information networks, creating high-wage jobs, sweeping education reform, higher standards, the tools to compete. Clinton Gore, a new plan to change America.